And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And our little duplicates are having a good time. And our volcano tamer down here still has not kicked in. It's going to be about ooh, 17 cycles before that kicks off and we can get our hands on some aluminum. And I'm thinking in the meantime, we're going to be sticking in our kitchen in here. We want to put in a long-term kitchen that's going to last us to the end game. So I'm thinking something nice and big and chunky right about here with some deep freeze storage to make sure our food never goes off forever and ever and ever. Depending on how big you go, you can usually get by with one grill and one gas range, but we're going to chuck in two. Uh, just because. Uh, that means we're probably going to have our little food stockpile right here. So give me an igneous rock tile. It'll be something like that will be our freezing storage. Uh, then we're going to need some food on either side. We're going to want some gas ranges. Now again, you only usually need one, but depending on how big you go, you might require two. So let's give ourselves a little bit of room there. And then we're going to want a food storage over here. Now there's multiple ways to do food storage, but what we want to do is, let's see, something like that. Probably have a liquid blob right there. Hmm. Give me a few minutes to start putting the guts of this down. This is what our kitchen is going to look like. Well, it's not quite finished yet. There's a, a few pieces that have to go in. Namely, that's going to have to be... We're going to have to make a vacuum in there. This is going to have to be turned into a storage area. And I want a liquid to put there. And I was going to use crude oil, but I think we might want to use naphtha. And naphtha shouldn't be too hard to make. We definitely do have some plastic lying around. And all we have to do is melt that plastic and it will turn into naphtha. What temperature do we have to go up to for that stuff? Plastic melts at 159 degrees. Let's say 162-ish. So all we have to do is find a hot spot. And uh, there's plenty of hot spots around the place. Ooh. And uh, we just got to be able to cool it down afterwards. I think we're going to do it here. Namely because, well, we've got a cooling loop running through here. So even if we mess this up a bit, we should still be able to recover from it. And uh, what's the temperature looking like around there? Ooh, that's 1300 degrees. I don't know if our temperature shift plate can get anything out of that, but I'm willing to give it a go. So we're going to dig down a tile here. And then we're going to put in some... Ooh. Let me think about this for a second, actually. Uh, the problem is if we let the liquid touch this abyssalite, it might instantly flash to gas. That would be a bad idea. How about here? Yeah, that's much better. We can put in a temperature shift plate right here, and it should be able to draw a temperature diagonally from this section and make this temperature plate really hot. But then, once the temperature plate melts, which is going to be the plan here, it'll be touching, well, nothing that's too hot. Whereas if it was, say, over this tile, the moment it melts into liquid, it would touch this and probably flash into gas. This should work in theory, though it's been a while since I've done something like this. Now where's our plastic? Perfect. Uh, let's get ourselves 800 kilos of naphtha. I'm trying to remember here, can we actually pull heat out of abyssalite? Uh, we might actually have to go down and get our hands on some obsidian to do this or something, you know, with a little bit more temperature transfer. But uh, I suppose we'll find out in a second. You are... Yeah, my bad. Looks like we're going to have to dig ourselves just a little bit deeper and gain access to some of the really good stuff. Hmm. What's the shortest way in? Actually, this way looks nice and easy to access. This might be our best bet right here. Hmm. Right, we'll deconstruct that. Give me a minute while I come up with a backup plan. Well, that worked, but it did make things a little bit toasty around here. It's not that bad. We've got uh, some cooling nearby, so this should not be the end. Glad we insulated our mushroom farms. Anyway, uh, this abyssalite is a bit hot, and it's going to cause problems for a while, so we're going to store it somewhere where it can't cause any more problems. Maybe in here. In fact, let's chuck on another steam turbine there to keep that thing chicking over. Oh, and we should probably hook up power to that. What are we using as heavy what wire? Gold? Yeah, why not? Don't. Um... Once these are complete in here, what we will do is we shall copy these settings over, make them level fours. This is what I'm doing is I basically make a ca catch all storage bins and I just put them where I need them. For example, to clean up over here, there we have the exact same bins. Uh, then what we do is we just issue a sweep command and all of this stuff should now get swept into the steam room where it shouldn't be able to cause any problems. Come on, anyone? And yeah, they dump it in there. Perfect, perfect. Uh, once that's cleaned up, we can put ourselves up, a, put ourselves in a plastic tile and start melting it. If we put it there, it'll draw heat out of the subsidian, melt itself. But once it's melted, it's no longer a temperature shift plate tile. And once it's no longer a temperature shift plate tile, we don't have to worry about it pulling heat through the corners anymore, so it'll stop heating up. If you just dump this right on top of one, 
on top of something really hot or near abyss light and all that. When it melts into liquid, it'll then just keep heating up until it eventually turns into sour gas. You're, you're better off just, you no know, doing it this way. It's nice. I think if, yeah, this is something I figured out in a mini base series. It's a handy little trick, though, for getting your hands on Napta. We don't really need it right now, but it is a handy material, so... Ah, here we go. 109, 140, and boom. Napta liquid created. It's 159 degrees. Uh, we have a cooling loop nearby. Maybe we should divert just a little bit of that down here to cool this off. Or do we care? So yeah, let's divert just a little bit of cooling down here. We'll take advantage of some of the local piping. Uh, this is the piping we built for carrying up oil, I believe. Actually, wait. Yeah, we don't want to overwrite those. That's just a waste of time. And then we can just plug it in here, rotate it down, and we should be able to cool this off fairly quick. Finished. No time at all. You two connect there. Use our handy disconnect tool. I mean, I'm still going to call it pliers. It's the pliers tool. They can call it the disconnect tool all they want, but they basically took the pliers tool off the mod page and made it their own. Uh, ooh. It went in at 12, going out at 31. That's that's going to mess with the temperature regulation a bit, but it'll drag down the Napta fairly fast. We're just using radiant pipes made of gold there. Oh, actually, when it comes to cooling, there's these uh, conduction panels that have been introduced, and I haven't been using them. Uh, these things basically allow you to, you can stick them behind a building, say a plastic press or your steam turbine and stuff to exchange heat. The thing is, they're terrible. Uh, from what I've been advised, and I haven't played with this too much myself, you put them behind a steam turbine and they're not going to help out too much. They do a very small amount of cooling. Their main advantage is they work in a vacuum. That's what makes them really good. So you're still better off using radiant pipes when you've got vacuum or when you're working with gases and liquids. But if you're working in the vacuum of space, then those conductive panels are actually really handy. We'll find out more as we go along. Perfect. You're about cool enough that I'd stink. I, I think we can start pulling from you. We'll put in a pitcher pump, we'll make it out of ceramic because it's a little bit toasty in there. And that's going to allow us to pull the naphtha out of there and put it to where we want. And we're going to want a blob right there. Ooh, we got coming out of the gate. Barbecue, we shall take it. Nope, and we're not hiring any more duplicates for now. We're still waiting on, uh, where are they? This one over here, which we're going to get around to. The moment we get a good fridge, freezer, kitchen thing going, we can cook them the nice foods they want to help them join us. Hey you, we've got 800 kilos of Napta, it's been cooled down to 85C, that's actually pretty decent. You, uh, grab us a blob of Napta and put it right there. We only need about oh, 4 or 5 kilos. The thing is, I want enough that the duplicates can't push the gas or push the liquid out of the way because we want to use this to maintain a vacuum seal to keep our foods fresh. And a uh, blob of Napta is just that little bit tougher and I forgot to put that on Enable Auto Bottle. Oops. Okay, here we go. Uh, come on, which one you just got it? Yeah, now we only need a few kilos. Yeah, 20 should be sufficient. Done. And then we'll put the rest of the Napta back. Um, in fact, we'll make this the default storage location for Napta for the foreseeable future. Even though it is rather close to that location, I think it'll be fine. Grant! Okay, you, go wait. It's time we made ourselves a little vacuum seal here. You see, once we de deconstruct this tile here, if we've done this right, uh, there should be no way for gases to get in there. And we have a perfect vacuum. Exit! Now we can store food in here without it... Well, okay. It used to be you could store food in a vacuum without it ever going off, but now you have to deep freeze the food as well. So if you deep freeze the food and store it in a vacuum, or you deep freeze the food and store it in a sterile gas like hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and a few others, that also works. So, okay, we'll brick you in. Okay, over here we've already put in the conveyor chute. It used to be you could build these conveyor chutes diagonally. You can't do that anymore, so we have to build the conveyor chute before we seal this off. This is also going to become a vacuum. Uh, that's why there's that little blob of water in there. Once that water solidifies, well, there'll be nothing but a vacuum left. Just another handy way of making this into a, a vacuum area for our food storage. And... Done. Now we just have to provide cooling throughout this whole section, and I probably should have done this beforehand. You know what? Radiant pipes. We're using steel here. The reason we want to use steel is, well, steel is just better at transferring temperature. Uh, actually, you know, first, first we want to go over here. We are going to deconstruct all of this. Uh, actually, cancel that. We're going to deconstruct all the buildings in here. So, to there, please, if you wouldn't mind. Under utilities, under the same section as aqua tuners, you can find the thermal regulator. Now, this thing pretty much does the exact same thing as the aqua tuner, except it does it for gases. And this is sort of custom 
perfection for cooling down foods because while it produces far less cooling and it's a little bit more expensive power wise you can just stick hydrogen in it and hydrogen is fairly plentiful early game and you can freeze foods down to like super low temperatures hydrogen lasts up to or hydrogen can go down as low as minus 252 degrees whereas you know something like water can only go down to about zero you need to be going down to about minus 18 i think it is or 16 minus 16 let's say minus 18 to deep freeze foods that's a pretty low temperature and i mean uh, even napta over here can only go down as far as about minus 50 before you start getting problems crude oil that can only go down as far as minus 40. uh it's just it gets complicated working with those whereas this has lots of temperature range to work with is pretty handy to set up and it's pretty okay it's more expensive power wise to use in the in the actual cost of how much cooling it gives you but in the actual power wise of plugging a power wired into it, it only costs about, I think it's 240 watts, which makes it relatively cheap as these things go. Uh, so, ventilation wise, we're going to want to... Hmm, done! This is just going to be insulated igneous rock gas pipes. Uh, and then for these sections here, this is going to be radiant gas pipes made of steel, because steel is the best stuff we've got currently for... Well, thermal conductivity in gas piping. Uh, our other choices are wolframite, which we'd prefer not to do. I think aluminum would be better, but we don't have access to that. In fact, I don't think you can make this stuff out of aluminum. Yeah, radiant gas pipes uh, are pretty weird in that you can only make them out of raw minerals or some of the, the dual-purpose ones like steel, niobium, and thermium. Okay, oh, and there's one other thing I want to do. And we're going to be storing food in this tile and this tile. And our cook has given me an idea. What if we did something just very silly and we got... A metal tile made of depleted uranium which is radioactive and we placed it right there and we placed another one right there now it's going to radiate the areas a little bit but it should also radiate the tile that the food is going to be in uh, can anyone reach that uh, anyone yeah they should be able to get at it right yeah there's the, they're actually gaining access to depleted uranium so they should be able to replace those tiles so in theory, when this is done, these tiles should be getting radiated. Oh, and there's, speaking of radiation, there's our cook. Just taking a quick nap. Yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're going to be the only one. Uh, you're not going to be the only thing radiating this place when we're done. Now let's see how this works. Ah, now it's tiny. It's only giving out about 2.8 rads, but that should start killing all the germs. So, ooh. Eh, get rid of that. Damn it, how do we get in there? You know what, we will deconstruct that. And we're going to have to sweep up some of this stuff, aren't we? This should be the last piece, and yes, we now have a continuous line. So what should happen is here, it should cool down the hydrogen, it'll come out here, go around, go back in, done. Now we're not putting a gas tank or anything on us to even it flows or any of that junk. Uh, namely because we don't have an area to really store it, a tank of really freezing cold gases. And as well as that, well, we're not going to care too much. Oh, damn it, I forgot to put in an overflow. I should be treating this more carefully. There, gas will come in here if it can't come out the other side, it will jump across the bridge and keep rotating around. In theory, right? You know what? We'll find out when we turn it on. I really don't care too much. We might lose a blob of hydrogen here and there. And where are we going to get all that hydrogen from? Well, there's some blobs scattered around the map, but I don't know if it's enough. So instead, we'll just go to our hydrogen storage section over here, which has about 85 kilos of hydrogen per tile. I think there is more than enough in there. The only problem will be getting all of that hydrogen down to here, which is a little bit of a trek, and it's going to require... A lot of insulated gas tiles. Gas piping installed. Let's start priming the system. Oops, that. Now, I don't think we're going to need, well, a huge amount. We just need enough to actually start filling the loop. Uh, so I th actually, considering it's only doing half a kilo. Yeah, you know what? Let's give it a minute. You can risk having a little bit of free hydrogen floating around the place. But I did make some minor changes over here. One, I rerouted the input. So the input goes to here and it goes to a thermal sensor. So we can say if the temperature is above, say, minus 40. Hmm. And it's going to make it really chilly. So if it's above minus 40, it's going to send... Hmm. I think it's waiting for some gases to show up. If it's above minus 40, it'll start chilling down the hydrogen. And then we want to chill all of our food blocks to about, oh, I don't know, but minus 50 sounds good to me. Uh, maybe a little bit further, depending. Okay, there we go. Coming out the other side at 19C. Coming in at about 30-ish. Well, yeah, okay, this stuff's coming in at 60C. It's going to dump some heat in here, but this is going to take a minute or so for the system to fill up. Uh, once we've got enough hydrogen in here and the system's saturated, we won't need to add any more. And this should, in theory, start chilling down these food plates to quite cold amounts. 
So once I've got enough hydrogen in here, I might have to do a little bit of finicking back and forward to put on just enough. We'll cut back in. Right, this is my second attempt at topping this up. There's got to be enough hydrogen here this time around. Come on. Come on. Perfect, I think. Yeah, every single, every single part of it has a keto in it now. Uh, one thing we'll have to do is we'll have to stop this system at some point to make sure that when it's stopped or going, it still keeps rotating. Uh, I might have messed up on that front, but I'm not too worried, to be honest. We can take out a block or two of hydrogen if we need to. Well, we're all full. Hydrogen is going to flow back up here, and it should slowly get eaten by the generator. It'll take a bit of time, but we're in no rush on that front. Temperature-wise, this is bringing the temperatures down in here. That's good, but I'd like to do a quick check here to make sure of something. We're going to grab this temperature threshold, and we're just going to flip it off. When we turn it off, does the whole system stop? No, it does leave a break in the pipes, but... There's a little gap there now, but I'm kind of fine with that. Okay, we turn it back on again, and it should work out that kink. A tiny little gap is not going to be the end of the world. All we're trying to do is chill down these cold plates. This copper plate here and this copper plate here are going to be in contact with the foods. And we want this to be so cold that when the foods hit it, their temperature starts to plummet preferably rapidly. And that's why we're using vacuum in here. We could, say over in this section, use hydrogen in there as a sterile gas. I just was not bothered. You could do it, and that would make... Uh, the temperature transfer between the plate and the food a lot faster. However, we don't really care too much. We would prefer faster temperature exchange, but this way is more convenient in that if we had hydrogen in here, it'd transfer heat to the naphtha, cause all sorts of problems. This is just going to be, well, it's a compromise. There's always going to be compromises when you're doing your food storage. There's no perfect method. There's only what you're trying to get out of it. Temperatures here are consistently dropping. Metal tile is just about to hit zero. Uh, this one over here is only at 6. This is going to take a little bit longer because there's 10 kilos of water in contact with it. But not that much longer. And once that hits about minus 2, the water should freeze. And then we can demonstrate how, um, well, if a piece of debris is sitting on a tile, it will exchange temperature with it. However, it's also exchanging temperature with the atmosphere and stuff like that. But all, we're, all we care about is how quickly it can exchange temperature with the tile beneath it. We used copper because while gold is really good, in fact, we have a gold tile around here somewhere. Ah, over here we've got a gold tile. Gold tiles have a thermal conductivity of 60. Uh, copper is actually exactly the same. But the reason we're using the copper is it actually has a higher specific heat capacity, 0.385, uh, as opposed to the 0 0.129 of gold. The reason that makes any sort of difference is it just means there's a little bit more storage for temperature. That means that there's a little bit less temperature fluctuations. Now, I'm not going to try and big up this and sell it hugely. It's just a case of it's only a slight gain here. You're... <sighs> It may be double the specific heat capacity, but say something like a, an igneous rock tile here has a specific heat capacity of 1. Uh, and in fact, the uranium tiles are pretty good. They have a specific heat capacity of 1 as well. They're just not nearly as conductive. So these depleted uranium tiles are kind of help irradiating the food. Oh, and we've got ice. Now, this is where things will start to diverge a bit. You see the, uh, the ice is minus 2.8, minus 2.9. Minus 3, with the metal tile beneath it, minus 7, minus 7.1, 7 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. It's going to be much slower, and this could lead us to have a potential problem. We could have food in here, and before it manages to freeze, it goes off, and then we could end up with polluted oxygen off-gassing. That's going to be a risk we end up taking, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. For now, I'm just going to let this run until the temperature evens out, and we get everything down to about minus 50, and then we can start migrating all of our cooking from up here to down here. Then we're probably going to want to migrate our mess table so that we can uh, have our have it closer to our food production, shorter walk distance and all, uh, which means we're going to have to move all of our research. In fact, our research at the moment, we can't really do much with it because we don't have access to the next level of science. We can do the first three, but we don't have data analysis research or we have to do orbital data collection. I'm in no rush to do that. We've got plenty of stuff we can be doing in the meantime. So we'll just start doing the prep work on all of these. And then once we do get orbital data research, we can then come back here and knock out the rest of them. Okay, where were we? Ah, yes. Food migration. One quick change we're probably going to want to carry out as well. Stick in some airflow tiles here. I can already see carbon dioxide collecting. There's no way for it to get out of here, so... Or airflow tiles here. Or airflow tiles here. And that should allow all of that carbon dioxide to sink. Much better. A little bit of carbon dioxide in here is not going to hurt anyone. Uh, yeah, should be fine. Should be fine. Right, what kind of temperatures are we looking at? Minus 24. Right, maybe time for a tiny little bit of migration. Uh, just give me one last second. To try and attempt this migration, we're going to have to do a little something. Uh, namely, we're going to have to go in here and we're going to go for, say, cooking ingredients first. We're going to get all the pinched pepper nuts and the sleep wheat grains and we're moving them down here. Uh, so, you guys, no more. And you are going to be set to allow manual use. 
Uh, that means all the pinch of pepper nuts and all the sleep meat on the map will get dumped into that conveyor loader. Uh, currently we're not collecting the pinch of pepper nuts, they take up too much space in our fridges, so hopefully they'll bring some along and we can see it in action. Wow, nothing, not a single thing is available to... Right, in that case uh, we'll move on to the next section, which is going to be edible foods. We're going to move everything in here, actually not muckroot, I don't think we want muckroot in here. We'll take everything else. But uh, muckroot can stay behind, namely because muckroot can't go off anyway. Oh, nutrient bars and muckroot. Uh, how are you guys looking? You're on six and six. Okay. Now, will they move everything over? Errands wise, we are looking at no pending deliveries. Oh, I put it on sweep only. My bad. There we go. Okay, this is going to be fast. Now, the problem is we're worried about foods. Uh, kind of going off in here. And also this is going to lock foods away. See, they're going to go in here, slide all the way across, and then end up on these plates. So that's barbecue in there. It is currently refrigerated. But check under here. Its temperature is one degree. Yep. Oh, and you can see more and more is being added. Oh god, that's a lot of food in there. Okay. Are we almost done? Nope, it's not everything. Yet no food for anyone is available at this current moment, but lettuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, everyone, just get, get the last bit of food in here. We need everything in here as quick as possible. Okay, I think we've got everything in there. That's good. Now we're going to make a few changes. Uh, namely, cooked seafood doesn't need to go in here. All the cooked foods. Fried mushrooms, frost buns, grub fruit preserve, like all of these things are cooked items. We don't want any of those. What we want is raw items to go in there. So meal lice. Uh, lettuce, meal lice, meat, mushrooms, nut omelets, uh, paku fillets are raw meat, pickled meal, uh, no, roast grub fruit nuts, spindle grub fruit. Done. So all of those will go in there and also all the cooking ingredients. So all the cooking ingredients will get dumped in here. It's allowed manual use so people will bring them from farms or wherever, dump them in here and they will get chucked into this freezer or fridge type thing. Then once they're in there... Nothing can access them bar these two auto sweepers. So this auto sweeper can go, hey, grab that mushroom, dump it into this grill. Let's actually turn that grill on right now. You, give us some fried mushrooms. And look at that. Boom. Fried mushroom will get cooked. Once the fried mushroom is cooked... Oh, actually. Mm, I haven't thought this through enough. Damn it. Let's try this again. Uh, mushrooms will grow down here. Then once the mushrooms are grown, they will get dragged up here and dumped into this conveyor loader, which has auto... which allows manual use. So all of the basic ingredients, including the mushroom, will get dumped in here. Then it will go across this conveyor rail and end up getting fridged or frozen and whatever. It'll just sit in here and eventually it'll deep freeze. Once it goes down to, I think it's minus 16 or something. There's a few things in here that are probably already deep frozen. Minus 25. That barbecue is not cooling. I don't know why. Maybe it's fresh. Whatever. Then the food will get picked up by this auto sweeper, which can reach the ugly in here, and it will get sent in here to get fried. Once it's fried, it will pop out the bottom here as it'll get dropped on the ground. This auto sweeper will see it and pick it up and load it into this conveyor loader. Now this conveyor loader does not allow manual use. Only the auto sweeper can load it up. It's going to pick up any of the barbecue, cooked seafood, fried mushroom, frost buns, all that stuff. All the food that gets cooked here will get picked up. The only thing we care about right now is fried mushroom. So fried mushroom will get picked up in here and sent across this rail and to this section. Then what'll happen is if we are, say, have queued up something like mushroom wraps, Mushroom wraps are acquire fried mushrooms as one of their ingredients. They can reach in here, grab the fried mushrooms with this thing, and dump it into the gas range. Now the gas range can take the fried mushrooms and the lettuce, which remember the lettuce is automatically stored in here because we drag all our lettuce over to this section. And this allows us to make those mushroom wraps. And then once the mushroom wraps are complete, we can go into here, go into edibles, and then those mushroom wraps can get sent on. But we haven't actually made any mushroom wraps yet, so they don't show up here. For now though, we want people to be able to access the barbecue. So we're going to set them to say, hey, take all the barbecue out of there. That's a lot of barbecue. We want you to dump it into this section and then the barbecue gets sent down there. At the same time, we also don't have any use for the fried mushrooms just yet. So the fried mushroom can go across there as well. Thank you very much. Uh, any cooked seafood? Yeah, you know what? The cooked seafood and the frost buns, we're probably going to want all of those. So you, uh, yeah, just start cooking up everything. We'll figure out what we're going to do with everything else in a minute. Uh, yeah, done, done, and done. 
where now all this is going to happen is all of our cooked foods are going to get sent to this section and dumped here so that our duplicates can access them. So your duplicates can come in here, reach across, grab the foods they want, and they're still metting, sit, sitting on a cold tile, which should freeze a lot of them. You see its temperature's plummeting. Uh, fried mushroom, temperature plummeting, barbecue, temperature plummeting. Cooked seafood. Why? Why are you not going down in temperature? That does not make me feel good. If that does not keep plummeting in temperature, we're going to have issues. A quick save and reload, and now things seem to be working as intended. We have six kilos of pickled meal, and it's slowly dropping in temperature here. It's still only classified as refrigerated, but once it hits minus 18, it will be deep frozen, and since it's in a vacuum, it can never go off. Now, I'm still a little bit nervous about this, because some of the stuff was not working until we did the reload. There's no reason to say that might not happen again. Uh, I might want to get rid of the mods as well, that uh, maybe the true tile mod or whatever the thing is that makes these tiles look so shiny, maybe that could be causing an issue. I might want to uninstall that later if this happens again. For the time being, to help us out, we have uh, these two tiles here, and they basically store polluted dirt. Or actually, rot pile. That's what we're going to want to put in. Yep. So if rot pile shows up, it will get whisked away from in here immediately and dumped into the storage bins, because if it's left there, it'll off-gas. Hopefully, we can grab it fast enough. If we can grab it fast enough, then it won't off-gas, because if polluted oxygen ends up in there, we're in trouble. Otherwise, what we'll have to do, if we can't stop this bug from happening again and again, we'll have to put some gases in there, and the main one to put in would be... Chlorine. Namely because we can just get some bleach stone, stick it onto the rails, and dump it into there, like sticking a few kilos of bleach stone onto one of the conveyor loaders and jump into that section. However, chlorine has a freezing point of minus 34, which means we need to come up with the better thermoregulation system so that we don't have to mess with the temperatures as much. We're going to try and keep this at minus 40 for now, and uh, we'll see how it works out. But in theory, we should now be able to scale this up and store as much food as we want forever and ever and ever. And we can make mushroom wrap. In fact, we shall make a mushroom wrap. And we can make a surf and turf. We shall make a surf and turf. Can we make pepper bread? No. You know what? We are going to turn off frost buns. Um, we want to pick that up and dump it into storage. Perfect. We're going to need some natural gas for this, but once we get some natural gas, which there's a little bit down here, that should get us two of the fancy four plus morale meals. Yeah, quality of four plus, quality of four plus. That means we can feed them to the house up here, and this guy only needs, was it three of them? He needs, yeah, three unique meals of plus four or greater. And considering we already have the lettuce, that means surf and turf and mushroom wrap are done. What else do we want? And pepper bread we can definitely get because we've got sleek wheat grain coming in. We don't have a natural gas source on the map, unfortunately, but we do have a little bit of natural gas from down here. This is where we were making some plastic, so this should give us enough natural gas to get started. We're going to filter it with just a basic gas filter for now. We're going to grab as much as we can, use that to crank out just the necessary meals to grab ourselves that last duplicate. Uh, how are you doing? You should have that gas coming along shortly. We did have to make a few minor changes to allow some in. And... anyone? Actually, we should make this a priority six, just to overwrite. Yeah. Ah, excellent, Trevor. We should probably put lights in here as well. Trevor doesn't need them, but our second cook is probably going to. Do we have even a second cook? You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to make sure we get this produced, and then once we get mushroom wraps and pepper bread done, we want to make sure no duplicates eat. So that is our first mushroom wrap. Uh, consumables. Let's just not have people eat those, if at all possible. Yep. Done. Perfect. Then we can have that mushroom wrap immediately delivered to our uh, recluse over here. Hey, mushroom wrap. Perfect. And uh, then we'll get make sure that's included in our storage section as well. Right. Next up, we should be producing... Ah, surf and turf. Weirdly enough, that's making me hungry. It looks like it's drizzled in cheese. Mmm... Okay, well, we'll assign that out and make sure no one can eat that too. Here comes a duplicate with the food now. Wow, you have, like, crazy old guy syndrome going on. Okay, uh, well, have some surf and turf to go with that. You're gonna have... I have a strange feeling your day is going to be very, very, very full. Uh, the hermit loved the food. Well, that is great. Improve the nearby decor and turn on the festive lights. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, the... Improve the nearby decor. I think we already have an artist ready to go, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Surf and turf. Okay, pop out and give us the thumbs up. 
Come on. Seriously? Oh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, we should have pepper bread shortly as well. In fact, has pepper bread been created yet? No. Oh, come on. We have dug up a section that has a bunch of those seeds, and there's Boyd right now bringing it over, so we should definitely be able to make pepper bread. Exit. Done. Okay, we'll chuck that onto the rail as well. I just want to make sure these things all get stored away in a timely fa fashion, and no one tries eating them first. Uh, yeah, we'll be moving everyone on to, like, high-end food at some point, but not until we get a sustainable source of natural gas, which might be a while, considering there's no natural gas vents on this map. It's going to make things awkward, and if we do go with a petroleum boiler, we won't get natural gas that way either. We'd have to do a sour gas boiler, which seems like a lot of effort to make food. I mean, I'm willing to do it, it's just... It seems like building a sour gas boiler just so you can make, you know, some surf and turf, just stretch too far sometimes. All right. And pepper bread. Yay, the hermit love this food. Go on. And the hermit love this food. And he should do something funny. Come on. Oh. Fine, how's our hermit recruitment process going? Uh, success. My duplicate's cooking has whetted the hermit's appetite for communal living. They've also found what appears to be a page from an old logbook tucked behind the mailbox. Okay. Notable improvement to nu nutrition retention. Subject who participated in the most recent meal intake displayed minimal symptoms of gastrointestinal distress. Mineshaft excavation at Yurva Crater resumed following resolution of tunnel wall fracture. Projected time during brine reservoir penetration at current rate 41 days. Local time moisture seepage along eastern wall of shaft is being monitored. Preliminary surface subsurface temperature data is significantly lower than programmed estimates. Right, well this is all new lore for me. I think next up should be power because power is the one that's Probably going to take a little time. 3,000 seconds? There's only 600 seconds in a cycle, so that's going to take a few days. A quick couple of coal generators will also maybe flatten out some space so we can put down some statues. We've got to crank up the decor in here or something shocking. Oh, we might want to actually turn this place into a room. Christmas lights? Check. Uh, gravitas shipping container? Check. Improved decor? It's almost up. We just got to take it up to 120. We're almost there. We haven't even finished all the statues we've put up. Uh, what are you up to? 160. Wow. Right, well, decor is done. Uh, we could probably stop the last of the statues, but why bother? Let them finish up. He should be pretty happy with that, right? Recruitment process. Uh, success. All the excellent decor is making the her hermit feel at home. He scrawled a thank you note on the back of an old holiday card. Okay. Hi, kiddo. We missed you at your cousin's wedding last weekend. The gift was nice, but the dance floor felt empty without you. Ah. Dariush sends his... Dariush? Okay, sends his love. Uh, he's really turned a corner since he started eating those gooey pudding things you sent over. Any chance you have a version that doesn't smell like feet? What? Come home sometimes when you're not busy. Baba. Not so busy, but... Okay, any chance you have a version that doesn't smell like feet? Okay, that's, um... That's a thing. Okay, lights are on. We just got to wait 2,800 seconds until that's done. In the meantime, I think it's time I did a few quick time lapses of taking care of these volcanoes. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to hold that until we had food sorted. Now that we've got food sorted, we can pretty much just keep stockpiling large quantities of it. In fact, yeah, a few more of you guys can go back in. We can put the mushrooms back in because we can use them now. Uh, any food through here would also be nice. Hey, grub fruit preserve. Perfect. Um, buggery. And this is the problem. How do we get foods that are randomly around the place and put them into storage here? See, we don't want to end up with an infinite rooting loop. If we said, hey, allow manual use, then what'll happen is dupes will keep taking the food from here and dumping it into that section. So my normal trick to get around all of this was I would make one type of food. Let's just say we made uh, frost burgers. We would make nothing but frost burgers. And then what I would do is I would put a fridge right here and set it to two, four kilos. And then I would have this controller take all the frost burgers out of here and put them two to four kilos at a time in the fridge so if there's ever any problems this thing just takes the frost burgers out puts them in here and all the frost burgers get automatically dumped back onto the conveyor loader and chucked back in here so if anyone drops anything or any food ends up around the place all the food would just end right back up at a central location because it was dropped into a conveyor loader that allows manual use however we want to function on several different types of food we don't want just barbecue we don't just want burgers we want several like a whole eclectic mix of them if at all possible so that means we can't just do that because, well, then the duplicates can't access them or we need one fridge for each different type of food. So we need some way of getting food back in here. 
Hmm. Thinking... Well, to start, we'll probably do something dumb like a... Uh, we'll make it a sweep command, we'll allow manual use, and we'll manually sweep up the foods for now. But we're probably going to have to get a sweepy dock and some automation to make sure that these things end up where they're supposed to end up without manual intervention because, yeah, you're going to forget later on or not even notice. So what we've done here, allow manual use, sweep only, and all the foods we'd like to be able to sweep up there in case they end up falling around the place. And we just hit sweep. Uh, anyone want to... Or you can just eat it. <laughs> Never mind. Looks like that problem handily solved itself. Uh, muckroot. You can also get sent down here. We're going to make sure that the muckroot gets chucked in here. Uh, where are you? Yeah, muckroot. So the muckroot will end up in that storage. Done. And we'll store it in here until later. We don't actually need the muckroot. If, it, if there's an emergency, we can definitely pull it out of storage, though. Okay. Quick volcano thingy while we're waiting. We've got a... Oh, and that's a circuit that's overloaded. It's... What the... Why are you... Oh, damn it. How long has this been going on for? We'll fix those. We'll fix those. It's grand. Um, we're also missing your research station. Don't care. Uh, yeah, quick volcano timber while we're waiting for that... Uh, the, the Christmas lights to be on long enough for that dupe to join us. And we're done. Uh, we've got mini gas pump here that is creating a little vacuum in this section so that there will be no temperature transfer between the steam turbines in here and the outside world. Those, uh, it's the same as the one we did in the previous volcano tamer down here. This one. Yeah, same joint plate, same whole setup, except we're only using two steam turbines instead of three. And we're putting in a layer of oil because oil does help with the thermal conductivity as far as I recall, so it should help us out. Also, when I was filling up over here, I just removed the block in the middle now. Actually, we can... Hmm. Well, let's put that there. Uh, what we want to do is leave a vacuum gap there so that there's no no way temperature can get out. It's not hugely important, but, you know, might as well be thorough while we're at it. Uh, that can go and you can get analysed. This thing is currently active, so it should start heating this up rather quickly. In fact, how are you doing? Hey, we've got our first aluminum. 967 kgs. Okay, the water is eating it like a champ, but it did start freezing. Uh, let's see how long it takes before that becomes, well, steam active. Oh, uh, done, 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 and now we can delete that there. This is just so that we can harness this power later and dump it onto the grid. We don't need it. Honestly, you can just let this stuff just decay away. You don't even need the power. But I just like to add it in because it just doesn't seem that much harder. We just have to put in this joint plate and it can get plugged into our grid as normal. All right, uh, how are you doing over here? You are at 91%. Okay, so we got less than half a day. Well, buddy, come on. It's it's lovely out there. Look, you got we, we got you a double the decor bonus. You got absolutely stuffed full of food, though I'm wondering what you're eating in there now. Yeah, well, have you you've been alive out here? Do you, like, have a little farm or something? Or you're, sh you're, you're starvation ranching something in there. It's the only way. Ooh, we should probably go in there and grab those seeds. Uh, how are we going to get in there without upsetting... I don't want to upset the wheeze wart. Yeah, perfect. We'll go grab those while we're around. Some of these I'm just leaving because, for example, that is 97% fresh and... Ooh, we might want to go get those as well. Uh, it's just a few, like, say, this one here. It is deep frozen. The temperature in here is so cold that the stuff is minus 31 and it's in carbon dioxide, so it can't go off. So a lot of these ones we can just leave and never worry about. We can go get them later. There's like 36 there. There's another 36 there. Uh, there's 18 mutated ones and 36 there. We're going to want to go investigate those mutated ones at some point, though that might be a little while. All right, uh, you are going to finish that off, and we are going to see what happens when this counts down to zero. Okay. Success! The Hermit is very excited about being on the grid. The bright lights illuminate the unfamiliar file on the ground nearby. Okay. Log begins. A216. The director said there were supposed to be three of you on this task force. Where's the geneticist? In the bathroom. He went home. Long pause. It's the holidays. He has a family. We all do. That's exactly why the project is so urgent. It's not our fault this stuff sat in a subterranean ocean for a year and took another year to get back to Earth. The microbe sample didn't fare well on the journey. And most of the mechanical components are completely corroded. There's not much to... We're analysing it all and salvaging what we can. Uh, good. And take down those ridiculous lights. This is lab, not a retro shopping mall. Wait, what? So this was on Earth? 
Um, right, so they sent out the duplicates to go get samples and bring back and... Okay. Thanks for getting all the debris packed up for disposal. I thought you did that. No, I... Who took my sandwich? Not this again. Ren, did you load the shipping container? Seriously, I haven't eaten in 13 hours. This isn't funny. It's a little funny. Can we focus, please? Nobody took your sandwich, Rock Doc. Then why does my food keep going missing? Maybe the lab ghost took it. Or maybe you shouldn't just... You just shouldn't leave it out overnight. Gunderson probably thought it was garbage. He doesn't even clean down here. Right, because if he did, I wouldn't have to keep sweeping up the magnesium sulfate deposits that someone keeps tracking all over the floor between shifts. Right, so this guy is basically a stowaway that was hiding away in the scientist's place. Listen, I know we're all tired and things have been a little strange, but the sooner we get this sent up to the launch pad, the sooner it starts to trip to the sun and we can all get out of this creepy sub-basement. Fine, fine, fine. All right, so there's three people. Right, and all of them... So this guy was basically hiding away in the shipping container that was supposed to be sent to the sun. Okie dokie. Uh, story trade complete mysterious hermit. Swiss family Duperson. My sweet duplicate's efforts paid off. Our reclusive neighbor has agreed to join the colony. The only keepsake he insists on bringing with him is a toolbox, which, while he's while rusty, seems to hold great sentimental value. Now that he'll be living among us, his former home could be deconstructed or repurposed as storage. Let's welcome the new duplicate. Right, log entry. Uh, go on, going around. Uh, let's see what you are like, George. You are sleepy. Bio. Rocketry. Perfect. Uh, tidying. Not ter Another doctor. Uh, yeah, doesn't like the dark. Has ancient knowledge. Uh, green thumb plus three agriculture. Charisma. Sometimes chatting with them is enough to trigger an overjoyed response. Ugly crier. Balloon artist. Okay, the nectophobic. Maybe we should just change that to narcoleptic. You know, just because everyone else is narcoleptic, I don't want them to feel left out. We could, you know, mod it or something so that they become narcoleptic. Ugh. Though we should probably... Yeah, let's let's go chuck them into the gym. I think they're going to be running in the gym for a while, but dear lord, they have a lot of skills going on. That is... Nice. Okay, gym for you, and we'll get you a bed. Welcome to the colony, George. I mean... Richard Benkowski. I am. Be I bet you're really glad that you left your shipping container. Now you get to... Actually, you do look pretty happy, and you're singing. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna let you run on there for a bit. You're gonna need to get just that little bit more skilled up before you're gonna be useful for the colony. But I'm sure you will be a great benefit to us. Now, uh, we do need to do one last thing, and that is to move the mess tables down here. We want to make our great hall down here. We're probably going to squish our great hall down here, rip out this whole kitchen area, probably turn that into the sleeping area. Oh, oh yeah, this is... Mm. Or I could notice I've, I've definitely gone over the 30-minute mark, quite substantially. Ah. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, right, the food... No, oh, food, food has been sorted. I think we don't have to worry about any of this stuff going off, unless it bugs out again. Maybe that was just the originals going in, but you can see all of these. All right, yeah, you can see minus 43, minus 43, minus 43... Anything that's in there while eventually stabilizes around the minus 43 mark. That is perfect. The newer stuff, however, is taking just a little bit of time. That's right, Mushroom. They're going down. Exit. So long as that doesn't glitch out, we should be fine. Um, hmm. I'm thinking next up, though, is going to be geothermal power. Stick in a geothermal power generator right here. Oh, and probably tame those two iron volcanoes. Just, we'll be doing something very similar to this. Nothing too crazy, to be honest. Uh, we might combine the two into one. I mean, we've got an iron volcano there and one right there. So maybe making a big double production one might be on the cards. Oh, and we need to get around to making uh, lettuce. Now, there were suggestions made that we should make wild lettuce, but that just takes a lot more planting. We're really going to need about 13 or 14 lettuce plants if we want to run uh, all of these duplicates. And the amount of the, the amount of bleach stone, sorry, the amount of bleach stone we need is, is minuscule, so we'll be able to keep it running for ages. I'm thinking geothermal power, get our food all over to the fried mushrooms or the mushroom wraps that we're looking for, and then we should be stable for a very, very, very long time. Oh, and we're going to need to start getting into space science, namely because, well, we've knocked out a bunch of these ones, uh, yeah, and I'd prefer to start getting into space as well. From what I can see, though, we selected apocalyptic as the the asteroid type, which means, or the, the type of asteroid rain we're going to get, which seems to be destroying the top of the map. We're going to need to get up there and wall that in with an awful amount of steel, Good thing we've got this thing running. In fact, uh, let's just stick you on for another bunch more steel. How much steel are we up to? 20 tons. We're going to need about 60 if we want to hold off the top of the map. 
Yeah, no, no, no. We'll, we'll worry about that next episode. For now, I think that's some decent progress. We got ourselves that new duplicate. We got ourselves our food all set up. Uh, we're even cooking all the pepper bread because we can. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.